Last time, I built an omnidirectional wheel which had powered wheels around its circumference which drive in a perpendicular axis to the main drive axis. I looked at two existing designs for this. The first was Umburo, which uses helical gears to convey motion to the smaller wheels from a motor aligned with the main axis of the wheel. This allows differential drive between the two motors, one driving the main axis and one driving the smaller wheels. This works pretty well and allows the complete machine to balance on one wheel. I also looked at the Honda U3X and the Honda Patent for their active Omni wheel. This is a very interesting design using a set of rollers mounted at 45 degrees either side of the small wheels. This causes the small wheels to rotate as the two side mounted hubs are rotated against each other. I made a couple of changes to this design, mainly adding a central hub to hold all of the small wheels around the circumference in place. The original patent showed them all mounted on a flexible shaft, but this is quite hard to reproduce with no stretch and keeping high torsion resistance. I used thrust bearings and ball bearings to keep everything aligned and to keep tension on the central hub. Even though all of my rollers and wheels have straight edges so they don't follow a perfectly round contour, I found that the natural flexibility in my wheels helped me out because as force is applied to the top of the wheel, it squashes the wheels against the side rollers at the bottom and this seems to give us quite consistent traction. I wanted to improve on this slightly though and also reduce friction a little, so this time I've made new wheels with a rigid hub, these snap into place due to a feature in the middle and this allows the wheels rigid hub to run on the axle rather than the TPU, but it still gives us some friction to grip on the driving surface. I've mounted each axle in a slot shaped feature so it can still move and slide to comply with the rollers on each side as force is applied to the wheel. That seems to run ok, so the plan is to attempt to make a one wheel balancing robot with it just like Umburo on the Honda U3X. Just a quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lulzbot for supporting my channel with 3D printers. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, so check out my channel for more 3D printing projects and check out 3dfuel.com. The first thing I did to the wheel we had last time is replace that ring gear with a ring pulley so that we can drive this with a drive belt from the motor. I've also got a bearing on each axle and I've printed a skirt which those bearings slot into. And that's going to hold the axle on either side. So with the bearing on each end of the axle that pops into place and of course the whole thing runs the other way up so that the mass of the robot holds everything in place and that wheel runs quite freely. There are two sides screwed onto that piece and also a top which goes on top of that and you'll notice that's got a rather strange shaped cutout. I'm using two turning gear aero drive 6374 149 kV motors and these are pretty powerful. I use them in the past to pop a wheelie on a wheelbarrow. These go on some mountings and you'll notice they're actually both identical rather than symmetrical and that's because they fit back to back and that makes the two shafts off centred. So with the lid and the base fitted to that we've got quite a sturdy motor mount and you'll notice that the shaft sticks out of the back of those motors and that allows us to fit an encoder so we can position the motor accurately and that means we get super precise control. And as you'd imagine that funny shape fits into the funny shape cutout on the base we already made. But as you can see we're going to need some way to tension those belts because they're pretty loose and that's not really going to allow us to drive the wheel at all, at least not with any accuracy. So ideally we need some sort of idler or a way of actually tensioning that belt up, but luckily I've already thought of something that's built into the design. I've left a letterbox on the end and the reason that motor assembly is a funny shape and slots into the funny shape on the lid of the base is so we can stick a wedge in. So if I just pull that out and stick a spanner in we can see that our belt is nice and tight now. But I'm not going to leave spanners in there so I've made a couple of 3D printed wedges that are just the right size. And for anyone interested this is a T5 belt which is 10mm wide and 630mm long. So that seems to be running fine now, my belts are tensioned up so we can drive the two sides of that wheel with the motor and we've got encoders fitted to each motor. 
I'm using an O-Drive 3.6 which is a brushless motor driver and will drive two brushless motors and position them with encoders. Thanks to Cool Components for sponsoring the electronics for this video, I've got a Teensy 4.1, which is the main microcontroller for this, as well as an MPU 6050, which is the inertial measurement unit I'll be using to measure the angle and balance, and the NRF 24L01 radio chip, so I can hopefully drive it via remote control. And I'll be using the OpenDog 3 remote for this as usual. I'm using two LiPos which are 6 cell at 24 volts or thereabouts and each one's 1300 milliamp hours and I'm going to run those in parallel to get twice the capacity. So all of that's mounted on the top of the robot, we've got the electronics there with the batteries underneath and on the other side is the O-drive of all of our power wiring. I also put a handle on top so it's easier to hold it and it'll be easier to tune it up when I'm tuning up the controller to make it balance. But before we continue with that, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is Altium Designer. Altium Designer is the world's most trusted PCB design system. It allows engineers to connect effortlessly with every part of the electronics design process. Altium Designer brings 35 years of innovation and development and is focused on a truly unified design environment which makes it the most widely used PCB design solution. With Altium Designer, you can create PCB designs with an intuitive and powerful interface that connects you to every aspect of the electronics design process. Altium Designer allows you to share the real-time state of projects on the web so that web team members, manufacturers, and even customers can review and mark up your designs without ever leaving your design space. Altium Designer integrates with mechanical design software and allows bi-directional communication between your ECAD and MCAD tools, which makes collaboration with other parts of the product design team easy. Native integration with Autodesk Inventor, SolidWorks and PTC Creo is up to 10 times faster than your typical error-prone data exchange methods. As a result of the Altium 365 Cloud, which comes included in your subscription plan, teamwork and collaboration are easy with nothing additional to install or configure. So check out the link in the description to this video to start your free trial of Altium Designer today. For now, I just wanted to get a grip on the controls and getting that motor running with the encoder and getting the O-Drive set up. So for now, I'm running this manually from the remote. And as you can see, if we drive both sides together, it goes forward and backwards. But if we drive either side in opposite direction, then it should stay stationary and those little rollers should roll side to side. But as you can see, there's quite a bit of creep even though those rollers are rolling side to side as I'm running the opposite hubs in opposite directions, that wheel does creep along. And that's a bit of a problem and it's going to wreak havoc with our control system because it won't know how to balance. So I tried tensioning up each side and each side of these has a separate tensioner set of nuts that pushes the thrust bearing in to hold those hubs on. The best that I could get out of it though was that the wheel always creeps in the same direction, so here I'm reversing the direction of those hubs which are always running in opposite directions to each other, but the wheel is always creeping forward. That does show that the tension is the same on each side though, but I think the reason for the creep is the angle of the wheels, and both of those hubs are symmetrical which means it's probably pushing it in one direction more than the other. That's how it was in the patent though, which shows those rollers on the sides being symmetrical. It's quite a consistent creep, which means I can make a creep compensation factor in software which always takes a bit off the main rotation of the wheel. So now it almost always stays still, or at least sometimes it creeps in one direction, and then a little bit in the other. But that's pretty much the best I can get out of it, and of course that friction is going to vary all around the wheel. Now I've tuned up quite a lot of balancing robots in the past, you can check out my balancing robots playlist on YouTube, but I'm really having problems with this one. Front to back seems like it should work, but side to side just doesn't seem to work at all. And on closer inspection, it appears that the side to side wheels just aren't getting traction with the surface, or something else extremely strange is going on, so it's almost impossible to tune up to balance. So with the motor actually turned off, it looks like those rollers will turn and I can actually back drive them against the smaller rollers on the hubs. And that's probably why there's quite a lot of slippage when there's fast acceleration to try and make it balance. So I made new wheel hubs with longer slots in for the axles of the main little wheels all around the circumference. And that'll hopefully allow more squashiness so we can squish those wheels in at the bottom to meet with the smaller rollers. That doesn't seem to have really helped though, you can see the side hub spinning away, but we're not going anywhere. So those little wheels are basically gripping on the surface, but the little rollers on the side hubs are just spinning past them and not conveying any traction. 
So I decided to go back to the wheels from last time, which are really squashy, because we seem to have quite consistent traction then, albeit at lower velocity. So we're going to put those back on and see what happens. And now I actually do have more traction, so you can see the robot is actually keeping up. I'm trying not to hold on to it too tight, and I've got it tuned up here in both axes. So it looks like it's almost working, but at some points when the wheels really need to turn fast sideways, then we do still lose traction. You can see those side hubs spinning away, but basically the robot doesn't go anywhere again, and that wheel just gets stuck on the surface, and the side hubs just spin away and nothing happens. And of course we still have that issue with slight creep as well, which is biasing the front to back axis and really upsetting the controller for that because the wheel's moving when it's not supposed to. So that's another problem that's inherent in the system. Even though those wheels grip a lot better, they still back drive and they need to slip past so the side hubs can move their wheels at 45 degrees. If I tighten it up too much, the wheel jams. Now, of course, it probably would work better if all my little wheels around the circumference of the wheel were on a flexible shaft and they were all driven together, because then we wouldn't be reliant on the one or two wheels that are touching the ground to have traction with the side hubs. So that would mean we convey far more force in unity with all of those wheels moving at once from the two side hubs as they rotate against each other. I considered trying to make this out of a flexible drive shaft, this is a Dremel one where you put the Dremel on one end and the cutting bit on the other. We'd have to take the middle out, but it's going to be very difficult to attach all the wheels to it properly, and also make it in a perfect loop that's attached together so that it doesn't come apart with the mass of the whole robot, or a person on top. And even then we'd still have the problem of the creep, which we'd need to make sure those side hubs are perfectly tensioned and we've perfectly factored in software to take out the creep, even if it's in one direction. So it may well be that the helical gear solution for turning the drive round by 90 degrees that we saw in Umburo is a better solution than these rollers. That still relied on a short piece of flexible shaft though linking every three wheels together. I have considered using a drive belt twisted to 90 degrees to turn the drive round for each of the wheels, but that's something I need to give some more thought to how the central hub is going to work. And also found this toy by Spinmaster, the Upriser Ducati, which has actually got an active Omni wheel on its back wheel, and that allows it to skid steer and do all sorts of tricks. The main thing it can do is actually do a wheelie and it can balance actively side to side or on one wheel which is pretty clever, so that's definitely an actively driven Omni wheel. I can't find any details on it, so I've bought one of these, and we're going to tear it down next time and see what's in the back wheel, and see if that's a good solution. It's a shame it won't balance, but then I think that this wheel is probably mechanically flawed and it's never ever going to balance in its current form, so I'm going to come back next time and we're going to make a new wheel to put in this rig, with the improvements and some of the ideas that I feature at the end of this video, and see if we can get it to work, and hopefully we can, since there's several examples of one-wheel balancing robots with active monowheels. I've published the code already, and the CAD for this, so if you'd like to support me through Patreon, then you can, and the links are in the description to this video. And patrons and YouTube channel members can get access to all of the videos up to a week early, and sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up. Alright, that's all for now.